Good morning kids, it's Mr. AG here, and today for math we're going to be talking about the relationship between multiplication and division. So it's going to work like this, I'm going to have a tiny little mini lesson here where I kind of explain everything about the concept, and then I'm actually going to do a second video where I want you to follow along with me um, in, in your green workbook on the lesson 17 problem set. Um, where we will work through the problems for inverse operations showing multiplication and division are related, that they're opposites of each other. Um, and, and then you'll have an independent assignment um, to do the homework by Cami on your own. So it's going to be three parts today. This is the first part. And um, we're talking about this question here. What is the relationship between multiplication and division? In second grade and first grade, most likely, you, um, you, were, you discovered the fact that addition and subtraction are opposites. They have the same parts. In one, you're putting two parts together to make a total. In another, you are taking a total, taking something away from a total to get a difference. Well, in multiplication and division, it's very, very similar. They both have the same number of parts. Um, they have the total items, number of groups, and the equal sized groups. This is very important in multiplying and dividing. The groups have to be equal sized. So um, multiplication and division are known as inverse operation. Here's your vocabulary word for the day. Inverse just means opposite. So they're opposite operations. Operations means calculations or computations. Multiplication and division are, pro are uh, they, they're problems that have the same parts, but the parts are used in a different order. So we went over the parts. When you multiply, you work to find the total. So the total is missing, and we call that total the product. You use uh, the number of groups and the size of the group, which are the factors, to calculate the total. We've been working on this, okay? This is just reviewing vocabulary. So you, you could either take the number of groups times the size of the groups and get the total, or the commutative property tells us that we can flip these factors. The order of these factors does not matter. You can start with the size of the groups, multiply by the number of groups to get your product or the total. But in division, the order is reversed. You already know the total, so you start with the total, and you divide by the part that's given. So if you're given the equal groups, then you divide by the equal groups to find the size of the group. If you're given the size of the group, you divide by the size of the group to get the number of groups. So the three parts are always going to be the same. You've got the total number of items, the number of groups, and the equal sized groups, and it depends on what the problem gives to you um, when in, in how to use each one of these parts. But in division, you always start with the total. So usually it looks like you start with in the, the, the largest number that you're given um, is, is the total. Now, as you get through more and more advanced in math, that's not always true. But in third grade, the, the number that's the highest number out of these three is going to be your total number of items. Start with the total. You could divide by the size of the groups to get the number of groups. Or you start with the total and divide by the number of groups to get the size of the groups. In either case, the answer to a division problem is called the quotient. That's a review vocabulary word. We've talked about that. The quotient is the answer to a division problem. Here are a couple of examples to illustrate. Um, so in red here, you see we've got 2 times 3 equals 6. And down below it, 6 divided by 3 equals 2. Notice that the parts are the same. We've got 2 groups of 3 equals 6. Um, and here we've got 6 total items divided by 3 gives us 2. Um, a way, a, a, an illustration for that is this array here. We've got um, two rows of three x's. Okay, one, two, three, and then another one, one, two, three. When you put it all together, you get six. We could look at it as three groups of two, three times two. So we could do two col or a column of x's here, a, a 
column of x's here and a column of x's here. So we've got three columns of two x's gives us six total x's. Or we could start with the total and divide it into groups or into rows or columns. So if we divide six x's into two rows, so div six divided by two, we've got um, three x's in each row, or the size of the group would be three, the number of groups would be two, okay? If we start with um, the total six and divide it into columns of two, the group size would be two, and the number of groups would be three columns. So we've got one column of x's, two columns of, of x's, three columns of x's. The same works for any fact you can think of for multiplication and division. I used 5 times 4 equals 20. 20 divided by 5 equals 4. You could also use 20 divided by 4 equals 5, or 4 times 5 equals 20. They all, four, all four of those problems have the same parts, and the illustration is the same. I've got four rows of 5, or five columns of 4. So I've got the equal equal groups and um, um, a specific number of groups to give me 20 total X's. If I start with the total and divide it into rows, I would have 20 X's divided by four rows gives me five X's in each row. Or 20 total X's divided by five columns gives me four X's in each column. Okay, so they, these multiplication problems and division problems are opposites of each other. They have the same parts, but you use them in a different order. In multiplication, you are searching for the total. You're calculating to find the total. And in division, you start with the total and divide it into equal groups or by the number of groups. This will be very useful for you as you move forward in your education and in your math studies. Um, knowing the relationship between multiplication and division can help you solve a number of problems. All right, next up, um, click into the math folder and watch the, the mini lesson and problem set. Um, and we'll have, um, we'll have that to do as your assignment today. Your assignment will be in the next video.